Hey everybody, welcome back to the Audio Mall Podcast. I have Dave with me, and there's nobody more, you know, appropriate that I can start this conversation out with. But first, I have to ask <laughs> how you are doing, Dave. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been a busy couple weeks, uh, but I got a new monitor set up, so now the uh, webcam, much closer, so you get way more of my ugly mug. So that's fun. Uh, you know, had a band in the studio, got some creative battery recharge you know that's always cool uh you know otherwise yeah kiddos going to daycare internal freakouts is apparent all that fun stuff you know it's just a regular couple weeks that sounds about right before i get into this i have to just point this out if you haven't noticed i'm further away than normal because i got a comment from somebody that says why don't you sit further back like dave does it seems more natural when you're doing a podcast and sure as shit i'm further back and you're further forward i, I can't, can't make it up but I, just, I thought that was really funny because we 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 did not plan that no, that's just no. that's just really funny how that worked out okay so, God, that, that, that really is, it's, that, that's too good. You're talking about parents, parenting, okay? And you're talking about internal stuff. All right, I'm going to tell you a story here. There's two, there's two things I want your take on here. The first, normal day, same old stuff, right? So I go to the Blues Festival Saturday night, and anytime I see a good show, my creative juices start going a little more than normal, right? Yeah, yeah. Last night, it's around 7.30, and I start hearing a part of a song in my head that I've been working on a song for a while, but the bridge and the solo section, I just, I haven't figured it out and I haven't had time to just like sit and really play with it. And I'm just like, I'm starting to hear it. And I'm like, oh God, I'm doing it. I'm giving my kid a bath. And I'm like, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. And I'm just like, I'm hearing all this. I'm trying to pay attention to her, but like, all I want to do is just like leave and like run into this room and just like, just to see what's going to, I couldn't do it. And I, I was like, it was the first time in a while that I was, I was so frustrated because after yeah. all that, she starts throwing fits over nothing. You know, eventually she falls asleep. This is an hour later. Yep. And I come back into the room and it's I gone. have nothing. Not, yep. not only is it gone, but my motivation and everything, I'm just like, shit. And I think the thing that you'll understand, and when I try to frame this to other people, they're like, well, you do have other free time to play. It's like, yeah, but. That's not the same. Like when an inspiration comes yeah, to you, yeah. like you got to get it out and you got to get it out right now. So my question is, how do you cope with that? And have you had that happen to you? Oh, all the time. Um, there's a couple of things I've tried and, and it it's a like a constant problem that I'm always trying to work on and figure out the best thing. First thing I found out that it took me a long time to understand that was necessary is having a guitar somewhere in the house, like not in the studio. So that if I like have to work something out, like I can at least sit down with a guitar real quick. And like, if I, if I figure out how to play it, I could probably remember later how to like what I want to do. Right. Um, but even now, as they say that I don't have a guitar in the house right now. And it's mostly just because <laughs> you get the kid, you know, you got the kid running around and stuff. And like, I don't, I, I probably have a guitar. I don't care if it broke that I could leave over there, you know, but it's sort of like when it, it's just like have a guitar sitting in a space and it's just, I don't, this is my music area is where my music stuff is. So I don't know, but you know, first thing, try to have something you can grab real quick. That's like not in the way. My other that I always think is going to work that never really works is like record myself singing it on the phone. And I have like all these recordings of my feet and me going like, nah, 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 nah. and like, I never go back to them. Or if I, if I do, I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like they just don't make any sense. But no, totally, man. I mean, like sometimes it's just as much about the mood as it is about the idea. And like you can't recreate the mood, you know. I have this weird thing where it's like I always have like good ideas about stuff while I'm uh, doing the dishes. And it's like it's the worst time. I'm soaked. I'm halfway through. Like I'm not going to just like, you know. But I'll. Um, what I try to do is try to keep singing it to myself until I can get there and, and finish it. But like I kind of find like I have never had success coming up with an idea having time in between and coming back to it it's just never worked and uh you know sometimes i'll have other ideas off the idea that i thought i had or something or whatever but no man i don't have a good answer i wish i did because it happens a lot you know it's terrible it is it's so terrible and here's here's the second part which is the other thing i wanted to ask you if this has ever happened to you now you don't buy as many guitars as i do 
but I buy a lot of guitars. I've never had this happen. So normally when I'm thinking of a part, I immediately think of the guitar that I would, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll probably use the Jag. I'll use something like that, right? Last night when I'm having this thing in my head, all I could think is I got to rush to the room and I got to play the guitar that's not here yet the Paul Reed Smith, for whatever reason, that's the guitar, I, I, I've never, and it's not that, like, I don't know, like, I've, I've gotten in more expensive guitars than this one, it's just for whatever reason, like, I heard the part on this style of guitar, like, perfectly, and I'm like, that, I've already, like, associated it as, like, my guitar, and I didn't even think twice about the, the, the damn Gibsons, it's just, it's weird. Yeah, I, I've definitely had, like, you get this tone idea in your head that it's like, if you can't match it, the whole thing's dead in the water so i definitely get that sometimes that's even happened when i've had a guitar available but like i'm just doing it super quick so i'm like i'll just play it acoustically um you know to figure it out and then like you'll go back later and you'll throw like distortion on or something and you're like this sounds like shit like what was i what was i think like what was i feeling what what is this what did this need to be for it to work right and i'm like what am i just play it acoustic like n no you know like but i totally know what you mean i mean I, I don't really associate my sounds with my guitars in that way, you know, like unless it's very drastic. So I've never had that specific thing happen, but I totally know that there's like a some sometimes it's just getting that thing that's in your head. That's like impossible. You know, it's like I hear this sound and it's got to happen this way. And if it doesn't, it's just not the thing, you know? Yeah. And I think the weirdest part about it in this instance is. All of that would make sense if I knew what this guitar sounded like exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I yeah. don't. And I still was just like, well, that's it. Like, I subconsciously was just like, oh, that's the guitar for it. I, I don't know, but, but, but you know, you know, though, you know, and that's kind of the, that's why, why you buy a PRS. Like there's a level of hmm, that you're going to get out of it. And you know that, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the pickups might be a little bit muddier than you, than you like, or like, you know, maybe it's a little flubbier or whatever, or maybe it inspires you to play better than you think, but you know it's at least going to be this good, you know? Uh, uh, if there's one thing that's deficient with this guitar and does not beat my per like, expectations, I'm going to be very disappointed. I don't think I'm going to have a problem. <laughs> not with this one. Not with this one. Yeah. I went all the way with this one, but yeah. I just, I wanted to make, before we leave this topic, I wanted to touch on the, the vo voice memos again, because I've done the same thing. I I have probably like a folder of 200 things varying from seven seconds to like two minutes. Yep. I've never gotten anything out of any of it. Whenever I listen back, I'm either like, what the hell was that? Or like, what is this tone? Or what was I going for? Or, this is terrible. Or I lose the whole idea. And so my question to the audience, you guys, any of you have kids, if you have this happen to you, how the hell do you retain an idea that is suddenly coming to you at the moment when there is literally no way that you could run to the guitar, set up Pro Tools, and actually go to work? Because it's it's just not a possibility sometimes. And it's, it, it, I'd pay good money for that. I'd pay the equivalent of like a Harley Benton for somebody to teach me how to do that right. You, you know what? It makes me wonder even more too is like, I have this problem and this is like, this is how we work, right? You come up with an idea, you think of a thing, you sit down, you work out a riff, you play a thing. Like this, this concept that there are singers out there who are just like, I wrote some lyrics, I have a vague idea of a melody and like, I want to hear this behind it. And you're like, what, how is it possible? You have any concept of what's going on in the music behind the vocals that you've written that you haven't like laid out or done anything for yet. Like I, I don't, it drives me bonkers. Like, I, I don't even know how that's possible. Like to just be like, no, I have a vocal melody, but like write a song behind it or something. Cause I hear something and I want it to sound sort of like this, but no, no. That's why I don't <laughs> like dealing with singers, Dave. Yeah. We're, we're an awful bunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a necessary evil. At least like with the guitar player, even a drummer or bassist, it's like, you're like, oh, I'm feeling this, or a little bit of a groove you hit into the pocket, and you're like, oh, that's exactly what you're going for. A singer's just like, here's these words. Do you know you, you know what I'm going for, right? Like, you know what I'm doing, what, right? What yeah. the hell are you talking about? I don't know. No, it, you just kind of like a vintage sound. You know what I mean, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, what does that mean? Yeah, no. It, it's, it's, it's very commonplace, though, and it always does amuse me, and it always has amused me as somebody who's been, you know, the writer for a lot of acts where the singer does come up with something, like, totally independently, and then it's just like, all right, you, you figure it out. Make my vision how I hear it, and I can't explain to you what I'm hearing. Just make it work. And I'm like, 
uh, cool, cool. And, and while I'm at it, you know, I'll, I'll, so- I'll solve the hunger crisis and all sorts of other stuff <laughs> because it seems about as reasonable in some circumstances. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Dave, you were talking about um, Leon Todd. And yeah. yeah, he's a really cool YouTuber. And you said that he did a demo of a product that you were very surprised by. So I had not heard of this product or seen this demo yet. So I'm coming in completely fresh and vanilla as well as the audience if they haven't seen it. So it's on you. Tell me all about it. So it was the, uh, I've seen this before. Um, and, and I just, I guess I never really like saw any videos really demoing it out. But it's the Moore Captor uh, pedal. I think it's like the... I want to say it's like the GE7 or some, something like that. It goes in this lo- line of their captor products that they have. So if you have one of their uh, full-on multi-pedals that can do the captors, you could do a captor, you can upload it to the cloud, and then you can throw it into... It's just a regular pedal size, and I think it has... I think it was like 14 presets, and each preset has an A and a B channel. So you can load a captor of a amp with a cab, and presumably anything you put before it to captor, right? So... If you were so inclined, you could capture 28 different, you know, setups, either with 28 separate amps or, you know, tw- different setups for a handful of amps. And you could set up each of these presets and you could literally have your entire live rig on one single pedal that's just set up and is just captured of all of your, you know, your tones that you have sitting at home. That you just bring with you for live. And what I think is really interesting about this is like you think about all of the other pedals that do this, like the quad cortex or a Kemper or anything like they're huge and they come with all this extra other stuff. When at the end of the day, like if I was going for a live situation, like the idea that only the captor playback thing is in this pedal is just super interesting to me, right? Like it's kind of like, just, just take out the only thing I need from that pedal for a live situation and let me bring that And your, I mean, if you really wanted to, your rig could literally be one pedal, you know? Well, how does that work as far as the effects? I think if you did a captor with the effects on, you could, you could probably, I mean, maybe not time based, right? But you could, pre- you could do, you could do overdrives. You could probably do choruses, things like that, and you could include that in the captor, right? So, all right. First, a few questions. Few questions. How much does this thing cost? Let's see. Let me Google it. I came in unprepared. Okay, so while you're Googling how much this thing costs, the second question I would have here is, hmm, I guess then, so it would be similar to like scenes when you're using the Line 6? Yeah. Okay. No, that's pretty cool. So it's it's, so it's a normal guitarist pedal size. Is it like Strymon sized or like boss pedal size? No, no, like boss pedal size. Yeah. Uh, Hold on, let me... uh... Preamp Model X. Preamp Model X. That's yeah. Just throw an X at the end of everything, and we're okay. Got to match the Captor X. Because when you first said Captor, I was just like, wait, I'm th- I was thinking of the two note stuff, and that's not that's not at all what it was. And I'm sorry, I misspoke. Because they do have a Captor pedal, and the Captor pedal is that one that does the. Um, it'll do like pickups, like you can make a Les Paul sound like a Fender you know, or whatever, like it'll do like IRs of a pickup, which I also think is interesting, uh, although I haven't heard any great versions of it. It's all, So it looks like Tolman's got it for 140 bucks, the Captor X. The Captor X as in the two notes product or the more? I'm sorry, the Model, the model X. Although this one's the Model X2. What's the Model X2? All right. Th- that? Th- this yeah. is ridiculous. Okay. Th- th- these people, all, if anybody is listening <laughs> at these brands, you need, I, I, you, it's okay to take influence from some of the other companies and some of the products. Name your shit so that we know it's definitely yours because this alone, the naming of it, I'm kind of confused. Just sidebar. Okay. So, so yeah, Toman's got the Moore preamp Model X2 for 140 bucks. And you have 14 editable user presets, preset slots that'll support two channels, an amp model and a cab model for the, each of those two channels. So you could, like you're saying, with a scene, like a scene on line six, you could essentially set up 28 different scenes, right? Yeah. 140 bucks? Yeah. yeah that's a reasonable then. Because I was gonna say at that at that point, if it was if it was like triple the price of that, I'd say it's pointless because you have an HX stomp. 
um, but with way easier. Because the thing that worries me about that is if you do have 28 scenes, clicking through to each scene without bending down like throughout the set, that seems like that would be very tedious. Mm. Yeah, I think you'd... Pr- well, um, does it have a MIDI, MIDI in? I would assume. But then we're not talking about $140 anymore, Dave. This is, you know what? This is just like a damn video game. Yeah, it, it doesn't have MIDI in. So, okay. Yeah, okay. It is. Good. So yeah, it's straight yeah, up. Yeah. I was going to say, it's a microtransaction. It's like, yeah, you get the game. But if you actually <laughs> want, you, you want a chance of getting Ronaldo, you got to buy some packs. It's, it's, it's that mm-hmm, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get, get out of here. I agree with you. You'd probably have to set up every song on a patch, right? Like it would probably really be the only way to do it would be to be like, okay, one is track one, two is track two. I just like the idea that it's like, you really could, if you were clever, you could just be like, this is it. This is my whole rig. One, you know, a tuner, a wah pedal, this thing and a delay and you'd be done. You know? Yeah. Just throw the wah pedal in the garbage and I'm okay with that. I'm assuming you're a lead player and you, you know, maybe you want to rip some Kirk Hammett shit. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> That's silly. Hey, this is Leon Todd. He's doing it, right? He's doing some rat style solos and shit and kicking ass playing 80s, 80s crazy shit. So he's got a wap. He, he's cool. He, he plays PRS guitars. That's pretty cool in my book. He does. That's pretty yeah. cool in my book. That's funny. That's funny you say that. Um, speaking of uh, the kind of the digital stuff here, what did you think about the Tone Master? I think it sounded great for what you do. It, of course, got me thinking like, huh, what would I do if I had to go to a solid state? And um, despite having the crate amp in our, you know, chats about that miracle amp, I've never really come across a high gain solid state amp that I really think would could work for a live situation. Like, I think there's some that are fun and interesting. Like, I even really love those new little... um, you know, those little mini ones like Friedman's doing and the diesel got, but like, they sound really cool. I would like, they're not really usable, you know, like they're fun to mess around with, but I can't think of a, of a, um, of a solid state that would like work for what I do. I think that works great for what you're doing. Um, and I almost wonder like if you got some real high gain, like maybe some of the rev pedals or something like how it would handle it, if it would be convincing as like a high gain with a pedal in front of it, or if it would still sound like a solid state amp doing distortion, you know? Oh, don't you worry. We're going to be doing that for <laughs> sure. Because now that I'm getting out of the guitars for, for the variable future, dude, the costs are just the fees, the costs, everything. Yeah. It is, it is so not worth it. It is just, this is a terrible time to be doing it. So I'm clearing out inventory. And as a pivot point, one thing that is, e- well, things that are easy to ship and don't cost a ton of money and you don't have to worry about damage are guitar pedals. So that, that that's going to be an avenue we're going to go. I want to try, I'm not sure which high gain pedal I want. It's definitely on my on my list though of, of pedals I want to try through this. Um, I was thinking maybe one of the Strymon ones, either the, the Sunset or the Rivers, Riverside. Um, but, but that seems boring because I, I love Strymon so much and I'm going to love it. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to keep it and I'm going to be like, I don't need another one of these. And then that's going to be the end of it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that, um, I've had some friends who've had the, the Friedman pedals, um, who have absolutely loved them. But I think, you know, if you're, <laughs> if you're going for curiosity over safe bets, the Friedman stuff's not the way to go. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't really get into the high gain pedal world because my amps have high gain. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I always go to the rev ones cause I know that, that there was like that moment in time where they were all the rage on YouTube. Everybody was doing, uh, rev pedals. Um, and they sounded pretty good, you know? So I don't know. <laughs> when Dave says pretty good, that's not a really good endorsement for me to spend my money. But <laughs> as a side note here, I have, I've tried the Friedman BEODs in the past. I didn't like them. I didn't like no. them at all. No. Yeah, well, that's surprising because that's basically what those little mini amps are, and I think they sound awesome. No, I, I was not a fan. Um, I think I, I tried it through a few different applications too. I tried it through the Music Man, which is like more clean headroom than you're ever gonna get on like any other amp. Period. I also tried it through a Princeton. Oh, it sounded like shit through the Princeton. It was one of the worst. I, I couldn't get a good sound out of it through the Princeton. And I was just like, I was like, I give up. This is just not going to work for me. Um, and then I eventually tried it through. I had one of those limited edition Black Stars um, before they started the studio series. And it wasn't an HT. I think it was an Artisan. Um, I tried it through one of those. I actually liked 
the distortion that came with the black star amp itself better than that so it's just like oh well i mean cheers but one of the one of the one of the friedman pedals that i would want to try would be the small box but that goes against kind of what i'm what i'm going after here like i want something gainier to to, to kind of test the, the, the nature of it for fun too yeah it's weird i i feel like there's some sort of magic with um a clean amp and a distortion pedal that like you can't you can't guess that. Like it just, well, you, you have to guess that, right? Like they just, there's no formula to it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And it's like, I, I feel like personally I've had more luck using a decent high gain pedal through a effects loop than I have through the front of a clean amp. Like some clean amps do fine with them and some, you know, just can't pull it off. And it's like, I, I never know what, what the rhyme or reason is for it. You know, but, um, I, I totally out of your wheelhouse, but uh, the um, uh, Horizon devices, their their uh, preamp pedal, that thing sounds pretty sweet. That one was what I I was looking at the other day. The other one I was looking at was the Origin Effects. That that one that's a, that's a freaking expensive pedal, but the thing looks awesome and it sounds great. I just I, I worry how much tweaking I would have to do with that. That's one of those that has like sixty six knobs. That's intimidating. Mm-hmm, that's very mm-hmm. intimidating. Yeah. But they're all metal, so that's really cool. <laughs> I always like that about. It. I'm like, I'm like, what's that thing weigh? Like thirty pounds? It's a pedal. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well. Ironically, it would it would be close in weight to the amp because this amp I could pick this up and chuck this thing. This is the this is the lightest amp I've ever had outside of you know the actual portable C battery ran Mustang ma- micro that I've had for all of these <laughs> years. I've never had a guitar amp this light. It's it's really wild to me, dude. But like speaking about like pedal platforms and like those like clean amps, part of the reason I think this is such a good idea, the OG of YouTube when it came to like pedal demos and some guitar demos was um, Andy from Pro Guitar Shop, and. Mm -hmm. every demo like i think it was like 90 percent of them was through a fender deluxe reverb granted a two version but it is notoriously good at handling all sorts of pedals that's just part of the reason why that amp's been so popular over the years so i think it's a good it's a good kind of shoe in to be like is this actually going to work as well in like a similar environment not just like those clean funk tones and you know yada 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 fender 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 because i was surprised it did that well but and I actually thought the Optimus sounded good too, but high gain, that's that's a very different can of worms. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. And and that's why I thought the video was interesting because I was just like, oh man, I never would have thought he would go solid state. And then I was like, How, what would I do if I was going to go solid? So like, I, I'm like, I, don't, I can't even like think of a good option. Like I, I legitimately cannot think of a decent. Orange have a new one. What? <sighs> I didn't love it. You know, I, I don't know. I really, really hate their crush series. Like I think those sound God awful and uh, it, it's weird. It's like orange. I love orange amps. Really? I really do. But like when someone is, when something is doing a bad orange, it is so much worse than like just a bad anything else. It's like, you know, like if you do like a bad 5150, it's kind of like pizza. Like you kind of just deal with it. It's fine. You know, like you'll eat it. But like a bad orange is like, it's just like a pile of shit. I, it is. I, and for some reason, I feel like the crushes are just like this horrendous, like satirical humor version of a, of an orange. Like someone's making fun of orange amps with a crush sound, you know, like, oh, it's so bad. And I, it, the new one is like, it's in between, like it's in the middle of a crush and a actual orange, but still not enough. I laugh. I laugh I because, <laughs> because all I can think of part of the reason I got, I, I stalled off so long with plugins because my, one of my favorite amps of all time is the rocker verb amplitude three. I purchased the orange suite for that thing <laughs> thinking, Oh, you know, it's not going to sound the same, but it could, Dude, it's exactly what you were just describing to the T. It's it, like when they get that sound wrong, it is the most unusable sound. Like I would I would rather use like five rats all in a row. And you know how I feel about the rat. <laughs> it's like somebody went like orange. Yeah. Fizz all the way up. Mids all the way down. Bass all the way up. And you're like, have you ever heard one of these amps before? Or are you just guessing? Like... Oh my God, it's so bad. I but and and of course in classic Dave fashion, I can't just dislike something. I have to hate it 
with a vitriol unparalleled. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know what's what I think is nuts though about this is just that like we've gotten to this point with with plugins that they sound so good, and all I want, all I want is just for like Neural DSP to take the Saldano plugin and sell it to me in a pedal, just that, like something like that. I don't understand why they can't do that. Like, I know that's what the quad cortex was supposed to be or whatever. I don't want it to even be that complicated. Put the plug, one plugin in one pedal and sell it to me. That's it. That's all I want. And I just want somebody to do it. But line six is like, they're the closest because they're like, all right, we got the HX stomp and it's like a reasonable price. Everybody else is like, we'll do it, but for like two grand. And I'm like, I just want my hundred dollar plugin in one pedal. The quad cortex doesn't even do that. I know it doesn't even do that, but that was what the promise was, you know? <laughs> and while we're speaking of neural DSP and we're speaking of plugins, Dave, we have to give them credit. We really do. Because, yes, because we have, we were complaining massively. We said, look, enough of the prog rock. You gave us Corey Wong. Thank you for Corey Wong. Well, this is more me complaining, but you for the sake of, you know, the, the, the argument, it makes sense. Why do you keep releasing something so similar? But with this. Yeah. Oh, it sounds great. It does. I'm working on a long form for this one because I saw so many people. And this is part of the problem I have with doing YouTube. It's like if you're not like immediately first with something. Then, then there's like no point unless you really dig into the thing. So I'm, I'm taking that approach to it. I've found some sounds and some of the features this thing has on it that don't like immediately come to the eye, like the sat. Oh, dude, I don't even want to spoil it. It's, it's really, really good, and it's, it's a great step in the right yeah, direction. Yeah. Although when you click on the effects, you still get the same kind of vibe that you do when you click on the effects of any other one. But that being said. The actual tones and the amp itself and how it interacts, it's awesome. It's really good. So I think they did a great job. Yeah. I mean, there's something to be said for the consistency too. I mean, I I I would be curious to see what their repeat customer rate is. You know, like if you own one Neural DSP plugin, like what's the chances you're going to buy another one? Probably pretty high, right? I'm sure their return rate, their returning customer rate is high. So like, you know. I guess it should all work the same, right? All that being said, though, they have it keep introducing like new features that I kind of wish they would throw back in the old ones. Like, you know, like they have the detuning thing in the Petrucci one. Like, I wish they would do that in the other plugins. That'd be sweet. But, you know, you can't. No, get but to, to their point and to their credit, rather, they did update the Corey Wong with a bunch of stuff well after release. So who knows? Maybe in the future they'll do a massive update for all of them to include things like what you just mentioned that come on the Petrucci. But yeah, no, I just thought that was a really cool, worthwhile mention. It's not often we're talking about plugins. Now, I'm not really a plugin guy, but I, I, I can't say enough good things about those ones, though. The Neural DSP ones are amazing. Even the cleans on the Soldano, I, I, I absolutely, it blows me away that they did such a good job with that. And it is such, it is such a damn shame that uh, as of, to my knowledge, right now when filming this, you still can't put it on the Quad Cortex. It just seems like... It's weird to me. It's the only thing I want, and it's the only thing that they haven't given me. Like, to me, that's what the Quad Cortex should be. It should be only that. It should be literally, I want my plugins on a pedal. That's it. I don't care about any of the other stuff. I just want those plugins on a pedal. Why doesn't well, it do that? Well, that'll be a 2024 release. You can start your pre-order right now. It will be shipping in April of 2027, so long as the world has not decided to bomb us into oblivion. But I, I don't know. You you know how those guys are. They work really hard. They're really innovative. They're cutting edge at what they do. Yeah. But damn, they are slow. And I mean, pff, what are you going to do? It's a tall ask. Well, I, honestly, I just want to, I, I kind of want to be wrong, right? But like, so my job as a designer is like, the first part of the job is I go talk to the people who have to use the thing I'm going to design. Right. And like, I don't feel like I'm that far. I like I'm that far out of the user group here. Right. Like to me, neural DSPs big thing is that they make amazing plugins. So what's the next thing I would want in a pedal. Right. If like, I, if anybody listening here disagrees with me is just like, no, no, no. I want all of the other stuff that the quad cortex is doing. And I don't care about that part. Please tell me I'm wrong in the comments. But I feel like if they went and talked to 100 Neural DSP users and said, we're going to build a pedal, what do you want it to do? They all said, I want the Saldano on my pedal board. That's what they all said. All of them. 
I don't think I'm wrong. It's possible I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. And that's why it seems weird that it's like that wasn't the first thing out, out, out the gate. You know what I mean? That was in my top three. I was more worried about like the overall integration of everything, being able to run and just the routing thing of it really intrigued me and being able to have um, my wife's vocal go through it and run through its own processing kind of path on its own too. I mean, that's super cool, but was that like, is that what you wanted out of it? That's what you said, like if Neural DSP said this, tell me what you want, you would have said that? Yeah, well, the reason for this was because I wanted to start live streaming all of our performances too. So I wanted it to go into Pro, because then I, I live stream it. I go right into Pro Tools. It's just a guitar coming DI so that I don't have to worry about anything. And then all I'd have to worry about on the actual recording is some background and bar noise from my wife's vocal. I mean, at that point, I, I throw on some drums, add a little bit of ambience to it for somebody like you to make it sound like it's in a live environment. I, I, I'm able to cut live records or take, like if I had a really good Get a really good gig and like three songs that like we absolutely nailed. I just turn that into a thing. Eventually, it becomes a compilation album. That's a product that I can do that didn't cost me anything out of pocket except for just yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's how I looked at it. And like I get you, and th and that's amazing. I just don't expect that out of a pedal. In well, I did like, because they promised it was gonna do that. And you know what? It and it did do that. It did do that. The thing it didn't do though was again. The, but but to your point, the second thing was. I, I was so blown away by their plugins that I'm like, if this is going to sound like this and I get this other thing, considering that I want to record DI, I won't have to do anything after the fact because I can have this amazing tone straight in the Pro Tools. I'm done. There's no questioning. There's no mixing. There's no, oh, let me retrack it or reamp it. No, it's just done. So to me, it was part of that solution that I just explained to you was having the Soldano kind of sound or whatever plug in you, the Corey Wong, whatever, you know, as, as available to me so that it would enhance and make my workflow even better. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. I, I think we're saying the same thing. My point was like, before they even told you that was an option, if they were like, we're making a pedal, you'd have been like, cool. As long as it has a Soldano in it, I'm good. You know? and, and it sucks because the Soldano that's on, it's not bad. But it's just not as good as the hundred dollar plugin. No, yeah. Oh man, it just—it's a bummer. But you know, to bring things full circle, this is kind of why I like. You know, that's why I gravitated to the um, the preamp, the Model X, because I just like this idea that it's like I don't want like a even the stomp. Sometimes it's this big and it's you know it's limited in its blocks, and I'm sitting here on Pro Tools setting up all my MIDI files and all the switching and stuff, and I'm like can't this just be like the one fucking thing that I think sounds great and I can just be like, eh, you know, turn the gain down or whatever for the part, you know, like I just don't need all this stuff. I just want the one thing. <laughs> and yeah, an amp would solve the fucking problem, but then I'd have to hit pedals and shatter, you know. That's why my life is so easy right now in, 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 in this aspect. In many other aspects, it's not that easy. There's a lot going on. But in the aspect of this solution and why this is perfect, I got my Jackson Audio that has the two different drives for two different situations. Or if I want to go nuts, I hit both. I got the two Strymon pedals for all the kind of modulation I can ever need. I have my Crazy Pills pedal, which is the Earthquaker devices. And then the amp, I don't have to touch anything. I don't have to touch anything. And it has a DI out. And the, the cab sims, I think cab sim 2 is way better. It sounds way fuller. But like, it still, it does what I needed to do. I'm not going to record with this. Can you turn it off? Or is it always on? Yes. Ooh, okay. Then it's worth it. It's worth it if you can turn it off. Yes. Well, it's even better then because I did buy all those G12s and all, my, all those other speakers like the Celestians. So I, I can run it into Pro Tools direct have that cool baseline sound, and then I'm just like, there we go. Pick my favorite IR, and I am rock solid. Amazing. Or or if you really hated it, you could do, you know, like we talked about on the last podcast, there's that pedal that you could load, you know, um, IRs onto, and you could even run that to your front house if you still wanted it for live. But I, I think they're plenty usable for live. Oh, for sure. dude, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. I totally understand that my my inability to want to hit pedals while I'm playing and singing has led me down this horrendous road. Um, but yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. There is, there is something nice about that simplicity. And if I wasn't singing, I absolutely would just be like, fuck it. I'm just going to go pedals and a great amp and not think about it. But 
I suck at playing guitar and I suck at singing and I suck at hitting pedals all at the same time. So I have to figure out something else, you know? I have never in my life met a more positive person than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I've heard you say a lot of bad things. I've heard you dog on your guitar playing, but now you suck at singing, too? Is there... No, I'm all right. I'm all right at singing. I'm all right at singing. I'll give myself that. I'm bad at singing and multitasking. That's what I'm bad at. <laughs> now, it, honestly, it, there, there really is. It's gotten to the point, though, where it's like, I just, I have to think about, you know, like for, it's weird for me. I, I actually pay attention to, to my guitar playing more than my singing because I'm not as good a guitar player as I am a singer. So I memorize what I'm singing. So that way I can play guitar and think about guitar without thinking about what I'm singing. And the second you throw in switching channels and, and all that kind of shit in there, I'm just like, fuck, you know, like I, I lose it. So even before when I was doing the amp, I had, I had bought a custom pedal that switched channels on my amp and two loops at the same time. So I had a clean loop that I had like a compressor, a light overdrive going, and I think a reverb. And then I had another one that had a tube screamer and a noise gate going for the distortion. So that way when I hit the button, it would switch the pedal loops and switch my channel on my amp. So I could like literally not think about it and just be like part and hit the thing. And that was like even still sometimes too much because I'm just you know, too bit in my head about what I'm doing. So I was like, all right, we got to go MIDI and just like not think about this anymore. You know, that is just a sentence that still doesn't compute in my brain. We have to go MIDI. <laughs> so I don't have to think MIDI. Hey, we, you know, we played to a click track already. Right. So it's like, why, why do I have to do this? I'll just let something else do it. And the nice thing about it was if I'm doing pedals, like I only have so many options, right? Like I'm not going to do like 50 pedals. Right. But if I go MIDI, I can do as many pedals as I want because I'm not the one pushing them, you know? It's It works out, you know? <laughs> you laugh at me, no, but like... No, I only laugh because we just, we're just so different. It's just I, I, what, what you find to be a simple solution, I find to be so cumbersome and intimidating that I'm like, no. But then to you, stepping on... Yeah, but you stepping on a pedal is like, I can't do... I, I am thinking... I, 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 I would probably just like combust like Bender and like I am Bender yeah, please yeah. insert girder <laughs> absolutely yeah I don't know where that came from well, that guy that show was good <laughs> yes it's coming back again again a third time a fourth time actually third time. fourth time yeah 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 you're right yeah 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 um but yeah I I don't know it's it does seem like it's a it's a lot to leap through but it's really I you the mini's only hard to figure out once on the computer and then once you do it it's done you know, and then I never think about it again. Whereas during a show, I'm thinking about what's going on on my pedal board the whole time, you know, and I want to get out of that. I want to be I want to be just playing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do it. I'll, 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 I'll stick <laughs> with my, my my stomping on my multiple things. Although there's like there's like two songs where I have the Zelza and like if I forget to turn the Zelza off. Or I, I I hit the drive before I turn the Zelza off. It's 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 not a good it's not a good sound for, for the for, for the actual songs. But I mean like it's not something I'm like okay it's coming like I have to like pay extra attention. It's just like oh yeah just yeah whatever. I'm just I, I've just done it for so long. It's second nature. But then again like if I was to introduce singing to that, forget it, forget it. I I wouldn't use any pedals. I I would just play guitar and be like this is my tone. This is it. That's what used to happen. Like we would get to the point where I would be, I would start getting flustered with it and then I'd be like, fuck it. All right. And I just start rolling back the volume and, and that's fine. It worked, you know, especially for the limited amount of clean parts we had. Right. But like I would roll back the volume and then I'd just be like, cool. It's just going to sound like shit for this whole part because I don't feel like, you know, thinking about all this stuff while I'm like, I'm trying to sing and do my thing and like, you know, be involved and be in the moment or whatever. And then, you know, so that was like, that's part of it where it's just like, no, I want the guitar to sound as good as it can and without me getting in the way, you know? Well, Dave, I'm going to wrap this up, but you know, the an there, there is an answer to this, right? The answer is get no. Good. Get a good tube amp. Because if you have a good tube amp that does high gain, when you roll the volume knob off, it doesn't sound like shit. <laughs> it worked. It worked. Yeah. But, but that, yeah, I, 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 I like my going. MIDI. Solution. I know you like MIDI. 
Yeah. I know you like MIDI. You're obsessed. <laughs> you like MIDI. You like your line six. I, I, you know, and I appreciate all of it. I think it. I think it's amazing that we have all these options in general. I think it really is, and it allows a lot of people different. Like, because everyone's brain works different, you know, as far as just like the creative process where we started here, and like just like how things come out, and yeah, I, I, I'm. I think it's awesome, man. I, I can't believe I, I, I own a solid state amp that was not like a hundred dollars. So obviously I'm trying here, Dave. I'm trying to be open minded, but hey, like I said, the only the only concern I have with this wrapping this this is about this episode up. I don't know about the longevity of this, but I'll have no way of knowing until it goes. So we'll we'll see how long it goes. But if this thing lasts for like two years and then dies out at like right after the warranty, like an iPhone does, oh that's gonna be that's gonna be big problems because like that's like a thousand bucks. Yeah. I, I honestly feel like stuff like this is like, it's like Ikea furniture. Like, yeah, it's cheap and you probably pay too much for it. But if you don't treat it like shit, they last a decent amount of but time. But Dave, you're talking about amps that are primarily going to be used by gigging musicians who don't want to break their back. They're going to go in cars. They're going to get hit in the car by other gear. They're going to get chucked onto the stage by the idiot who's helping you and not paying attention to anything. Hey, this is just life, dude. This is life. Yeah. I will say that that does make me question the price tag. Like to me, part of the selling point of the solid state amp is that it's like 50 bucks, 600 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. 50 bucks. Yeah. And if you blow it up, it's like, who cares if you go buy another one. Right. But you know what? Well, you know what I'll do? If this doesn't, if this doesn't go out, I'm going to make you an offer. You can't refuse on the crate amp. And then we're just, <laughs> I'll, I'll just start gigging with the crate. Cause you're not going to gig with it. Hey man, I you 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 joke about it, but I have really been thinking about ripping it out and putting it into a head because I think it'd be cool. <laughs> I think it would be cool too. Uh, you know, I I I I wasn't kidding by the way, and the reason I said that is because that ain't won't die. Like even even when it was somewhat broken, it still worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely been thrown down some stairs, you know, uh, by accident, obviously. I, I was gonna say that seems like something Cody would do. He he would have like just like he would have like Hulk Hogan did. He he really liked his wrestling. He liked yeah, it a lot. Yeah. I mean, if the promo required someone throwing an amp, he was going to do it, you know? Yeah. Oh, who's that? Scott Hall. Rest in peace, by the way. Razor Ramon. Yeah. Yeah, what a legend. Somber way. Somber way to end this. But that, for whatever reason, we just got talking about Cody. And whenever I think about Cody, he was, used to be the drummer in Dave's band, Gunpowder Temple. That guy, whenever he got drunk, he literally thought he was a WWE superstar. And yeah, that immediately made me like, oh, yeah, who just died? Oh, yeah. So Scott Hall. That's pretty sad. Uh, troubled life. Do we talk? We talk about that all the time when he uh, promoted like um, Goldberg, and he threw a full thing of uh, <laughs> beer at your face at that party. That was that was pretty funny. Yeah, well, it was funny because like <laughs> it didn't hurt, but it was like I didn't know anything was happening. No, I was all of a sudden like get hit in the head with a beer, and I'm like, the fuck just threw a beer at my head, and why? <laughs> and then he's just like he's like still in the character, and he's like really like, Arr! and I'm like, I'm like. I'm like, did I piss this guy off? Like, what the hell? And it's just like, no, he's he's drunk and he's he's doing a promo. And I'm like, who's yep. the f- what pro? What? <laughs> like, you guys are so weird. Like, yeah, it was weird. It was the start of a very rocky relationship <laughs> between you and him. Yeah. Yeah, but I, but I, but yeah, that that's how do you get past that? I wasn't ever quite sure. I was like, I'm not sure. This guy must hate me. I I didn't know what I did wrong. No, no, it was purely for the promo. It was purely for the promo. Yeah, well, next time somebody does a promo, you should let in somebody, you know, because that, that we'll would be an, bad. Yeah, yeah, we'll make an announcement. Next time I'm at a drinking party with college kids and some, yeah, yeah and yeah. someone is cutting a promo. Yeah, all, all of these things will happen. Yeah, there, there are, yes, this will happen. This will definitely happen. We've rambled enough. We've tangented enough. Is there anything else you'd like to throw in here, Dave? That's all I got. Beautiful. I feel like this just turned into like a regular old conversation between us at the end here, but I mean, it is what it is. It's good. It's it was nice talking to you. So, uh, you guys, tomorrow, I, I honestly, who the hell knows what I'm gonna have for tomorrow's video. The PRS is delayed. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you guys now. I got a freaking notification on my phone saying your package is de- it's stuck in Jacksonville. Well, why is it stuck in Jacksonville at 8 p.m.? It could get here. I could get to Jacksonville, and then uh, no, no worries. No worries. That guitar will be here when it gets here. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, maybe maybe I'll do something with the wireless system. But that's a whole other topic for another day because that's something I want to touch on with Dave. But I need to film the cabled um, microphone versus the 
uh, wireless microphone solution so we can com- compare how they track against each other and then we can talk mm. about that but that's all we have for you thank you all for listening and we will see you next week hopefully and i will see you tomorrow and we'll we'll see what it is enjoy the rest of your day everybody <laughs> <laughs>